Hello everyone, my name is Pixelrifts, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we're over here at the museum, we've been doing a little bit of structural work, and the Great Hall is looking greater than ever. On a stream I put together these giant perimeter walls around the upper half of this whole room, and we're probably going to put something up here, I'm not certain what yet, but maybe some sort of like frescoes and friezes and artwork basically to show something. I'm not certain what yet, I don't know if it's going to be themed around the end because the rest of this room is, or if it's going to have more of a feel of overall Minecraft, if we're going to try and make some sort of pixel art paintings or something like that around here, just sketch something up on these walls, but I like them being a blank canvas like this, and potentially we could frame them out using some of the materials that we've used to frame down here. But basically I wanted to make sure that we could start getting a roof on this, or a ceiling at least, on this part of the building fairly soon. Because I've been thinking about the overall structure of the museum and making a couple of changes to the exterior, or additions rather, because over here I want to have some archways, a colonnade, I think that's what it's called. I, I really should research the architectural terms for these more, but basically a series of columns with a triangular uh, prism over the top, like a, a kind of um, like a Parthenon type of roof, basically, like a Roman or Greek kind of roof, just to give the entrance a bit more of a grand feel than just sticking it in the wall here. I figured it, it would come out a few more blocks. And I've also started shaping the outer walls of the museum. This has largely been formed by the fact that over here we have a mob spawner and I'm not certain yet if I want to have a glass floor in the ground so you can just walk over this and then look down and realize you are standing above a dungeon. But either way, I wanted to have the wall of the museum come out a little bit and then along so that it encapsulated this inside of it. We've already designed these wall sections here, but I'm thinking we need to maybe rotate these by 45 degrees and then come out at a 90 degree angle and then along at a 90 degree angle. We can do some design of the walls another time, but I was thinking we need to have the same thing on the opposite side and over here is where I want to do something that's going to be the focus of this episode. And it kind of fits with the themes of these exhibits. Right here we have the kind of what I'm thinking of as the early game exhibits when you're looking at trees, you're looking at grass and dirt, getting stone, finding the biomes, all of the early game stuff that you're going to encounter. And of course, in the early game you want to have some food available. And what I was thinking we would do over here is make effectively the museum cafeteria, but it's going to be kind of twofold. It's going to appear as a museum cafeteria, but it's also going to be the exhibit about food. And I think it makes sense to have the exhibit about food on the opposite side from the exhibit about mobs, because mobs are going to damage you and food's going to heal you. So uh, there's a weird logic to it, but I suppose it's justifying it in various different ways to make this the most logical place for the food exhibit to go. And that's going to require us to get all of the different kinds of food in Minecraft. Now if we look in the Minecraft tab here, is it in Minecraft or is it in uh, Adventure? It's one of these anyway. Has an advancement for getting, and uh, now it's going to be in Husbandry and I'm going to feel like an idiot. There we go. We have an advancement for getting every single type of edible food stuff in the game even if it's not good for you. So that includes puffer fish and spider eyes and raw chicken and the stuff that is going to give you adverse status effects if you eat it. But as we can see from this, there are 39 types of food in the game and we are going to have all 39 of those represented in a kind of kitchen cafeteria kind of build here. The problem with that is that it requires us to get an enchanted golden apple. So in today's episode, we're going to look into ways of getting an enchanted golden apple if you have need of one for an urgent project like this. And while we're on the subject, we're also going to look at how to get some more of the buried treasure in the world more effectively, because I recently learned of a really cool technique for doing that, which many of you may know if you've been following folks who like to speedrun this game. But personally, I found the revelation of this kind of mind blowing. So we're going to head out in search of a bunch of desert temples, abandoned mine shafts, maybe the occasional other structure in order to get hold of an enchanted golden apple. And on the way, if we find a shipwreck or two, then so much the better. But before any of that, because my elytra is looking at about half durability right now, I'm going to quickly head over to the Zombie Pigman Gold Farm and repair all of my tools. In Minecraft Java Edition, there are six potential locations now for finding enchanted golden apples, which are dungeons, mineshafts, bastion remnants, ruined portals, woodland mansions, and my personal favorite, 
the Desert Temple. Now, Desert Temples are my favorite mainly because they are so easily visible from the surface. You know what biome you're going to go and find them in, and they're very quick to loot. All we have to do is hop down into here, dig down in the right place, and we'll find ourselves a pretty easy enchanted golden apple if there is one in this temple. I'm going to light this up just for safety. We don't really need to worry too much about lighting. I'm just going to dig down on one of these corners, get into the burial chamber, disable the TNT trap, and then we can walk away with whatever's in these chests, which in this case is a little bit of gold, but I don't know for certain that we're going to find... Oh! Incredible. Okay, we... <laughs> I was expecting this to last a little bit longer, but we've already found one, so we got really, really lucky here. Desert Temples only have an enchanted golden apple in 2.6% of desert temples. So that is basically like a 1 in 50 chance that we're going to get hold of one of these, which is really quite good. <laughs> and there's some other stuff you might want to keep from this as well. I always bring the bones with me, even though I have a bone farm. It's just instinct at this point. Bone meal is so useful for a variety of stuff. And we've got another couple of pieces of gold and emerald and stuff like that. The other treasure you want to take with you is, of course, the TNT. So we're going to grab that and get out of here. And... <laughs> People, people are going to think that I've staged this. People are going to think that I knew where this desert temple was. Let me tell you, I didn't, and honestly, I was expecting to get a bit more content out of just randomly raiding desert temples on the off chance that one of them had an enchanted golden apple. So, uh, yeah, this was a bit of a wild find, actually. This is at 42.64.15.90 if you are using the same world seed and you feel like coming here to get an enchanted golden apple because there is one, it's there. Have fun looking for that, but we're going to take a look around some of the other desert temples that are in this desert because there typically are some and oh, oh, this is the, uh, this is the desert where we came to take down the structures as well. So we've already raided the desert temple over here because uh, it's a giant hole in the ground and we transplanted that one over to the museum. But I'm sure there are some other desert temples around here. There usually are a few per desert biome, especially if the desert itself is this large. So maybe if we go hunting for some more desert temples, we will strike it lucky and get potentially a second enchanted golden apple. There's another temple right here, slightly buried and quite close to a savannah village. So we're going to do the same thing in here. I'm just going to hop on down, hopefully get hold of something down here at the bottom of the burial chamber. There is always a chance, by the way, that a mob can spawn inside the burial chamber and trigger the TNT trap. It has happened to me in a high pressure situation during one of the Clash of the Creators challenges. So occasionally you will find that these desert temple burial chambers have blown up along with all of their loot when you find them and that one's just a regular golden apple. Okay, fair enough. But yeah, occasionally you will be dent. Are you serious? Are you freaking serious right now? <laughs> How? How has this happened to me? I have no idea. We've got ourselves two... In two desert temples, we found two enchanted golden apples. Once again, not a guarantee. 2.6% chance, but somehow... Somehow it's happened. Okay, this is wild. And that's a Respiration 3 book. All right, we'll take that with us as well. And a Punch 1. And I don't think anything else here is really worth keeping. Again, I'm going to take the bones just out of habit at this stage. But man, two for two. And a regular golden apple as well. <laughs> that's that's really not bad. That is not bad going. Okay, all right, I'm going to get out of here before, you know, the entire world caves in on me because this was clearly some kind of massive fluke and I've used up all of my luck at this stage. But honestly, this is why I like looting desert temples for this. It's so quick and so easy to do. You're in and out in a matter of seconds most of the time. And frankly, it is just a really, really cool structure to find. Whereas the other stuff takes a while to look for and is often a little bit more dangerous than the desert temple dungeons are so random you're just going to find them in caves it's not going to be a particularly easy time finding a dungeon deliberately likewise abandoned mine shafts are basically everywhere but the chances of stumbling upon one and then it having mine shaft chests with uh, enchanted golden apples in are relatively slim it has the lowest chance out of any structure of having an enchanted golden apple at less than 1.5 percent and i've landed slept for the night and put the enchanted golden apples here in my ender chest so i don't lose them if anything else should happen to me on the rest of this trip those enchanted golden apples cannot be crafted and will not be found in those desert temples again so i really need to be a little bit careful but yeah like i was saying there are other structures that have the potential to store an enchanted golden apple within their loot chests but frankly they are 
a little bit of a pain. Bastions have the highest chance with about a 6.5% chance per loot chest, but of course with Bastions you have to encounter piglins, you have to search for them in the nether, and they are relatively few and far between. If you don't have Elytra, exploring the nether specifically to find Bastions can be relatively difficult and hazardous. So it's usually best to wait until late game until you have Elytra and you can fly around the cavern of the nether a little bit more easily. The same honestly goes for Woodland Mansions. And I found an Enchanted Golden Apple in a Woodland Mansion before. I've done that on the Skyblock series and I think maybe even in the Survival Guide as well. But once again, Woodland Mansions are few and far between. You typically need to buy... Uh, maps from cartographer villages in order to find them or alternatively they require you to go thousands and thousands of blocks out if you know the coordinates for one so typically speaking woodland mansions are not going to be a reliable source of golden apples just because of their scarcity and last but not least you have ruined nether portals which give the second lowest chance at 1.5 percent of having an enchanted golden apple in the loot chest the loot chests are usually fairly easy to access and you can see ruined nether portals from the surface so once again if you're flying around with elytra you have a pretty decent chance of bumping into one of these Occasionally, look at this cur curse of vanishing golden hoe. Are you serious? But yeah, we have the option of looking for ruined portals, but they are again relatively few and far between. You're going to need to explore a wide area to find them. They're in every biome, more or less. You can even find them at the bottom of oceans sometimes, which means you can't really focus your search in order to find them. You can't stick to one biome like you can with desert temples. Honestly, I think desert temples take the lead here in terms of the best structure to raid if you're looking for an enchanted golden apple. I mean, look at the evidence of this episode, and don't take this episode as an example because I got extraordinarily lucky. I was honestly expecting this episode to take all day finding two of those apples, but we managed to get two enchanted golden apples from two desert temple raids. I think that's pretty good going. And for now, I'm going to head back to the museum via the oceans because if we can run into a shipwreck around here, I'll show you the buried treasure technique that I was taught recently, which is guaranteed to change the way you look for treasure in Minecraft Java Edition. But actually, before we do that, I just spotted this desert temple buried here in the sand and I cannot resist coming in here and trying to take the treasure from this one as well. Imagine getting three for three on enchanted golden apples. It does not seem likely to me, but we might as well come down here and take a look anyway. We have emeralds in that one, gold in that one, a diamond there, and yep, there we go. No, no third enchanted golden apple for us, but <laughs> the fact that I'm saying that alone is pretty hilarious. Let's grab the Frostwalker book from here. Let's grab the TNT from below the ground, and then let's make our way out of here. I've also just stumbled upon this witch hut location. Look at this. Imagine making a witch farm out here. Look at the pre-built perimeter that we have of ocean and swamp and the witch right there. Yes. Oh my goodness. This would make an incredible witch farm location. Once again, there are the coordinates 3300 1660 if you're looking for a witch farm location in this world that's a little bit further away from spawn. We're not here for that though. We are here for this. The shipwreck down here and I did do an episode about finding buried treasure previously and for that I actually ended up using a tool to look up the locations of buried treasure because I wanted to get a full stack of hearts of the sea so that we could make as many conduits as possible and use them for lighting. The reason I'm bringing that up is because since then I've discovered a much cooler way and in fact a much more technical way of getting hold of buried treasure but I also bring it up because I did loot a lot of buried treasure in the process and there is a chance that we might run into places that I have already been. So apologies for that if we do. But first of all, we've got ourselves this buried treasure map. We need to find the location. The sun is going down that way, which means that is west and we need to head east and a little bit south. So let's head in this direction. And the dot came into view right over this desert biome. And as soon as we get into roughly the same chunk as the X, we're gonna put the map away. We don't need the map at all from this point onwards because uh, thank Thanks to one of the other competitive events that I was part of, uh, the Clash of the Creators, iJevin taught me a really neat trick for finding buried treasure just using the chunk data of the chunk that you're in. So shout out to iJevin for this one. Uh, I don't think he's the one who's discovered it. People have kind of let him know that that was a, a cool way of finding treasure. But since I found out about it from iJevin, shout out to iJevin for letting me know, especially in such a high pressure situation. So now that we know that we are in roughly the same area as the X, of the map of the buried treasure we could do that trick where we align ourselves with the x facing a certain way and if you've got the map in both hands you can see that a little bit better but we're not going to do that at all in fact like i said i'm going to put the map away 
say in my inventory. Instead, we're going to hit the F3 debug screen, and on the left, underneath the XYZ coordinates that tell us where the player is, there are block coordinates and chunk coordinates. We're going to be looking at the chunk coordinates there, in particular, the section where it says 13, 15, 4. Now, those are coordinates for a block in a chunk, basically laid out the same way as the XYZ coordinates. So 13x, 15y, and 4z. And so if I enable chunk borders around us right now, you can see that we're standing basically on the 13th block on the x-axis, the fourth block on the z-axis, and block 15 in terms of the subchunk. This blue line here indicates the subchunk. So if I go up a block like that, you can see we go to 15, 0, 2, because I'm on block 0 of the next chunk up, and all of the values go from 0 to 15. And if we line ourselves up with a certain block in this chunk, we are guaranteed to dig down and find the buried treasure. Mathematically, this is how the game generates locations for buried treasure right now, and since players have discovered this recently, this might end up changing in future just to make the game a little bit more interesting. But we want to line ourselves up with 9 on the y-axis and 9 on the z-axis inside of the chunk. So right now, as I'm here hovering on the water, you can see it says 9, 14, 9. If I dig straight down under this block, like so, and I don't have my uh, Aqua Affinity helmet on, but there you go, we immediately find the buried treasure, along with all of the other stuff, and a drowned comes up and attacks us. Like I said, we found the buried treasure, and I'm going to place a couple of blocks here so it all floats up to the surface, and we can gather everything that this buried treasure chest had to offer. I'll take the heart of the sea, and then I'll resurface because the water is trying to kill me. But that is a guaranteed method of finding the exact block in which the buried treasure can be found. Basically, anytime you find a buried treasure map, as long as you go to the coordinates roughly that the X spot is, then you can turn on your F3 debug info and dig on that block. Nine blocks over in each direction in a chunk will find you the buried treasure every single time. Look for the 9-9 nine, nine coordinate. And from that, we got ourselves three diamonds, a bunch more gold, another heart of the sea, and a couple of other bits and pieces besides. So that was a absolutely stacked treasure chest. Unfortunately, shipwreck buried treasure chests cannot be containers for enchanted golden apples, so unfortunately we just don't get that kind of loot from that type of treasure chest, but honestly it is worth looting a bunch of treasure chests using that method, and I don't think, unless it changes, I will be using another method to find buried treasure again. I think that's such a neat mathematical way of looking at it, and props to whoever discovered that, because wow, that is changing the way I look for buried treasure in Minecraft now. And honestly, if you were desperate and had a bit of time on your hands, you might even want to go looking for buried treasure like that without looking up these treasure maps. Because, as we know, the treasure maps have a tendency to point you to the same location more than once. Even if you break the treasure chest once you've looted it, they do have a tendency to direct you to exactly the same loot chest sometimes with subsequent maps. And that's always a bit of a disappointment. So I think... If you wanted to go looking for buried treasure and you had a lot of time, you could potentially do it. But honestly, without knowing the starting point, without knowing that there is a buried treasure roughly in that area, it would take you a long time to systematically comb all of the beach biomes looking for treasure like that. So the chances are you're not going to find it particularly fast by just randomly checking those 9-9 blocks in every coordinate. I think it's going to be a lot more sensible to go looking for a shipwreck in that area, first of all. At least to give yourself some sort of starting point. And from there you can go looking for buried treasure and you're guaranteed to find it pretty much right away. Now, despite what I said earlier about abandoned mineshafts being difficult to find, the one place you can be guaranteed to find them pretty easily from the surface is, of course, the Badlands. If we come out to this mesa here, we can actually dig our way into an abandoned mineshaft from a lot of different places. Abandoned mineshafts generating with some kind of surface level entrance makes them so much easier to find and then navigate afterwards because you already know where you've been you can kind of retrace your steps and eventually you'll probably end up stumbling upon a chest full of resources i think the disadvantage mine shafts have over yep there we go we got one golden apple i was holding my breath there thinking we were going to get another one uh the one disadvantage i think mine shafts have over desert temples is the fact that they take a while to explore and you're not always guaranteed to run into those mine shaft chests very frequently whereas with desert temples it takes you a fraction of a second to come in there and loot all four chests basically there are even ways of looting a desert temple faster than the way i like to do it i like to go in there and open up 
up each chest individually, but I've seen some people just blow up the TNT trap and collect all of the loot that way once they've made it a little bit safer. So there is actually a way of looting a desert temple even faster than what we've already seen in this video. Whereas the abandoned mineshaft has a much more winding structure, it's going to take you a while to find a mineshaft chest, and when you do, there is the lowest possible chance out of any of the structures that it's going to have a, an enchanted golden apple in it. So I think you have much higher chances in the end of looting desert temples for an enchanted golden apple because at least that way you can be somewhat guaranteed that the apple is going to be quick to find. The desert temple only has like one percentage point higher of a chance but that is still kind of worthwhile and you can loot four chests in quick succession which means you're going to find the enchanted golden apple a little bit quicker if you do. Honestly though if you're going to go looking in abandoned mine shafts for enchanted golden apples you may as well do it in a badlands biome. There is also so gold everywhere so if you can settle for just a regular golden apple you'll find the resources you need to make one here pretty quickly and even if the mineshaft chests come up short you've potentially got the chance of finding some diamonds and redstone a couple of name tags and other valuable resources and yes i did in the end figure out that i had an inventory full of shulker boxes and that i could just stash all of the good stuff in here so this is looking like a pretty successful looting trip today so now back at the museum with everything that we got from that trip we have two enchanted golden apples that i've now put in this shulker box we've got two regular golden apples as well that's several of our pieces of food covered and we've even got some cooked salmon there to get ourselves started you know what i was going to do the kitchen build in this episode but i'm thinking i might leave it there and we might approach the kitchen build as part of a live stream or in a separate episode or something like that as we work on getting the museum stuff done. This episode has taken me a little bit less time than I expected it to, so I want to capitalize on that and get some other stuff done with my day. But I hope you guys enjoyed this look at how you can find enchanted golden apples effectively and get hold of that buried treasure a little bit quicker. Thank you so much for watching the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixorifs. Please don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.